In this video, we're going to talk about how we can go about generating correlated random variables. And by that, what I mean is this. Suppose we have a vector x that consists of a whole bunch of different components, x1, x2, x3, and so on. Um, and that all these components, x1, x2, x3, there are random numbers. If these were uncorrelated random numbers, this would be easy, right? We would simply take a random number generator and run it n times um, and so on, and we would get n uncorrelated random numbers. It would also be easy to generate these numbers if they were perfectly correlated. If they were perfectly correlated, I'd generate one that random, random number, call it x1, and if they're perfectly correlated, then x2 must be the same as x1, x3 must be the same, and so on. Again, it's, it's easy. What's difficult is if I have to generate um, a bunch of random numbers that have a specific correlation pattern, and, and if this correlation is not perfect, so that statistically, x1 is, say, related to x3 and x5, um, in, a, in a particular way, maybe it's strongly coupled to x1 and x3, so x1 and x3 have always very similar values, but is not coupled at all to x2. So they're, x1 and x2 are completely independent random variables. How do we go about doing that? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, this is an exercise that is more than a theoretical one. It's got really important uses in astronomy. So, for instance, if we were to take a look at the cosmic microwave background, um, shown right here, this is basically a temperature map of the early universe. And what you see is that there are some spots that are um, hotter than others, this hot red spot, cold spot, oh, spots over here, and so on. And this is a um, random field. No theory predicts that the universe is hot in a particular direction. All we do in cosmology is to predict the statistical properties of this random field. Now this field is random, but it's not uncorrelated. You can definitely see there are structures in this map. You would not get a map that looks like this if you just generated a number of pixels, all of which were independent. And to make this more precise, imagine, for example, taking one of these hotspots and cutting a little postage stamp out of around this hotspot and doing this for every single hotspot on the map and stacking them on top of each other, averaging the results. If you do that, you end up with something like this, where around every hotspot you have this ring. And so what this is telling you is that, again, these hot and cold spots are not random. They're structure. If I have a hot spot, statistically speaking, I expect to have a ring around that spot. It's a little difficult to see if we go back to the original map. And that's because here you've got all sorts of hot spots overlapping each other and so on. And of course, this is after a random field. And so we need to average to get a lot of hot spots before we can see the statistical patterns. But clearly, there are some correlations here. And in this case, this ring around every hot spot or around every cold spot turns out to be due to the interplay between gravity and sound waves in the primordial plasma of our universe. So this exercise of generating correlated random variables is a very useful one. And as an example, in, in our case, uh, we could imagine this vector consisting of temperature values of that map we just saw um, in various directions. The temperature in direction number one, given by this unit vector r hat one, temperature in direction 2, temperature in direction 3, and so on. And what we would like to do, for example, is to make sure that the temperatures at the different locations have the right correlation properties so that they give me those rings around those hot spots and cold spots. Now, if I'm going to generate 
you know, a simulated map with the right properties, like we just saw, I've got to find some way of describing these properties. And the way we go about this is we form what we call a covariance matrix. The covariance matrix, which we give a symbol C, is essentially a generalization of the notion of a variance. More precisely, the covariance matrix for data that has zero mean is given by the ensemble average of x vector in an outer product with itself. And to give you a little intuition for this, imagine sketching out this matrix. The diagonal elements encode what we would call the variance, what we were used to. So for instance, the first diagonal element is the variance, the spread, in the variable x1, the first component of this vector, perhaps the temperature of the sky at a particular spot. And similarly for x2, x3, and so on. The off-diagonal elements tell me how correlated those different numbers are. So this gamma 1, 2, this off-diagonal element here, tells me how correlated pixel number 1 and pixel number 2 on the sky are. And gamma 2, 1 here does the same thing. And you can have lots of off-diagonal elements giving you the full correlation structure um, on the sky. Now, covariance matrices have a bunch of properties, one of which is that covariance matrices are symmetric. So for example, gamma 1, 2 is going to be the same as gamma 2, 1. Okay. Pixel number 1 is as, is, is as correlated with pixel 2 as pixel 2 is as is with pixel 1. Covariance matrices are also positive definite. This means that they have all their eigenvalues positive and that ensures that the power in your map is always positive as one would expect. And one thing that I re really would like to emphasize is that there is nothing that's random about a covariance. Okay. The covariance encodes correlation information about these random variables, these x's, but the covariance itself is not random. Okay, there's nothing random about the elements in the covariance matrix. Uh, it's very similar to, say, with, the, with dice throws. Every throw might be um, completely random. You can't predict whether it's one, two, three, four, five, or six. But its statistical properties, its mean of 3.5, or its variance, there's nothing random about those. Those are just properties um, of the system you're dealing with. And similarly here, our x's are random, but the covariance matrix, which um, takes this ensemble average over these random variables, is not a random object. There is nothing random about it. So having established this, we can go ahead and write down a recipe for generating um, random correlated variables with a correlation structure that's specified by a covariance matrix. Give me whatever covariance matrix you want, and we can generate correlated random variables that have the right correlation structure. So the first step is to take our covariance matrix and to do what we call a Cholesky decomposition. This is a decomposition that is always possible if your um, covariance is positive definite. And with the Cholesky decomposition, what we are doing is that we're taking this um, symmetric positive definite matrix here and decomposing it into a lower triangular matrix L 
and it's transpose, which then is upper triangular. Now, this doesn't at first sight appear to, to be helpful, but this Cholesky decomposition is, what, is what's going to help us correlate our random variables. The next step in the recipe, leaving the Cholesky aside for a moment, we're going to bring the pieces all together in a second, is to generate a different set of random variables in a vector z, which are uncorrelated and have unit variants. So each of these uncorrelated random variables has a standard deviation of one and a variance of one. And to put it in a more mathematical way, these two um, conditions, if I were to put them together and to summarize them in one statement, are equivalent to just saying that the covariance matrix of Z, this different set of random numbers I'm going to generate, is equal to the identity matrix. Okay, So these are easy to generate. Just pull out your random number generator um, and ask it to give you n uncorrelated random numbers with unit variants. And with these two pieces, it turns out that if you then form the next vector by taking our uncorrelated random variables z and multiplying them by l, you end up with x, the vector we were trying to generate, and it turns out that x will have all the right correlation properties. Let's prove what I just said. So here's a proof. One way to see if what we did was correct is to just check the recipe we just wrote down. And the way to check it is to see if our x vectors have the right covariance matrix. So if I want to compute x, x transpose ensemble averaged, I can use the fact that x was generated by computing a z matrix and multiplying by L. So I can insert that here. And remember crucially that there is nothing random about the covariance. If there is nothing random about the covariance, you know, there must also be nothing random about its decomposition, L. Then these L's come sailing out of this ensemble average. There's nothing random about them. The only random things here are the Z's. What we're left with then is the ensemble average of ZZ transpose. That's the covariance matrix of Z's, which we said earlier, because of how we generated them, is equal to the identity matrix. And if that's the case, then we're left with L, L transpose, which is precisely the Cholesky decomposition of the covariance matrix. And we conclude that what we did was correct the covariance of these x of this x vector when generated in this manner give us gives us the right covariance structure and so we've completed our exercise of how we generate random correlated variables now in closing i'd like to provide a little bit of intuition for how the recipe we outlined generates the right correlation structures. So our covariance, remember, the crucial step in our recipe was to decompose it into a lower triangular matrix and its transpose, L transpose. And so in some sense, roughly speaking, and this is more for the sake of intuition, we can think of L as sort of being like the square root of C. Now, what does L look like? L is a lower triangular matrix, 
and so L looks something like so. It's only got elements coming down here in the lower triangle. And so when we take um, our prescription and we, when we multiply by Z, this is what happens. So we've got Z1, Z2, Z3, and so on. Watch what happens when we multiply our uh, vector Z with this L matrix. So the first element of X is obtained by taking this vector and laying it on here. Okay. So what this tells us is that we can generate our first random variable simply by taking Z1, which has standard deviation of 1, and multiplying it by something that's got units of the square root of C. It's kind of like scaling the standard deviation of Z1 to give us the right spread in X1. And for the first pixel, that's fine. We've only created our first um, random number. There's nothing to, for us to enforce, right? There aren't any other um, random numbers it has to be consistent with. It doesn't have any correlation structures it has to obey. But now that we've generated our first number, when we come around and generate the second row of this vector, we take this guy and we lay it on top here and now it touches Z1 and Z2. Now that makes sense because Z1, because X1's already generated and we need to make sure that X2 knows about X1 because they're gonna be correlated random variables. So X2 is gonna to need to get some information from Z1, again, scaling it up by multiplying with L and also needs to know about the variance of the second component and so it touches Z2. So now we have two correlated random variables. When we get around to generating our third random variable, we've already got two. So generating this third row better involves Z1, Z2, and Z3. And that's indeed what happens when we multiply this column vector by this row here. Um, it touches Z1, Z2, Z3, and so the third pixel is aware of the values of the first two and knows how to correlate itself. And we go on and on until we get around to generating our last pixel and everyone else is in pay place already. So we can just lay the entire vector down and we need information from all the Z's because everyone is correlated with everyone else. So that's the intuition behind how our recipe for generating correlated random variables works.